World War II. Many cringe in the name of the war that brings back horrifying memories and stories. Many died, many suffered. One of the few wars never forgotten. It was in 1939 when the war started from German and Japanese longings for powers and resources. It started taking over land and countries without consent. By then, nations were fighting against the Axis powers, but many of the countries didn't immediately enter the war. Russia, or the former USSR, was in league with Germany until their peace contract was broken when the German army tried to take over the USSR. Many European countries were affected by the Nazi overrule. Japan, being a small island, also needed power and took over many Pacific areas for their resources. China entered the war in the Manchurian Incident with Japan, which started in 1937. However, China held its ground. The U.S. entered the war as a result from cutting off fuel supply to Japan. In return, they bombed the naval fleet stationed in Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. Sunday, December 7th, 1941, the attack on Pearl Harbor. The United States became skeptical of its Japanese residents. Thus, the American government put into effect Executive Order 9066. Through Executive Order 9066, many Japanese members who would have held influential power in Hawaii, such as teachers and priests, were sent to an internment camp on Sand Island. On the West Coast, however, all Americans with Japanese heritage were placed in nearly a dozen internment camps in the more desert-like areas of Nevada and Utah. The difference here was not only the location, but the fact that not only men and women were being placed in these prisons, but the young and elderly as well as the handicapped and disabled. The camps were surrounded by 10 foot high fences and topped off with barbed wire. The living conditions there were suitable for that of a prisoner of war, not the younger the elderly. Immediately after the attack on Pearl Harbor, their country needed them. There was a call for action and then many Nisei responded. Mr. Warren Higa. What is it that you were doing during the time of the attack? Sunday morning. Ah, I don't know what I was doing, but I was outside. Sunday, I, I, I saw smoke coming from Pearl Harbor Pearl District, right? So people say, oh, what's going on? So I thought, ah, it must be maneuver, okay? You know, maneuver. Then, from plane flat over our house, eh? Hinomaru. I said, hey, we're at war. And then, feel uh, about uh, yeah, 10 o'clock, I think, in the morning, radio announcement came and said, all oh, university ROTC cadets, eh? report to the camp university with the uh, khaki, eh? you know, our uniform, eh? that's it. Went there, they told us, you guys are now Hawaii Territorial God, you know, Sweden God, just like, right? And they gave us, uh, the old Springfield uh, rifle, right? The Hawaii Territorial Guard was responsible for the capture of a mini sub off the Bellows Air Station in Waimanalo. They also provided guard over the important buildings in Honolulu in case of another attack. From there, we were assembled to the university gym. And that's December 7. Around mid-January, I forgot the exact time, but we were kicked out, right? 
Japan University, uh, from ROTC, I mean a territorial guard because we're Japanese, eh? the word went out that Germany ROTC always carrying a gun, eh? mm -hmm. so we were kicked out, you know, this, the territorial guard was not disbanded, we were kicked out. The only guy remaining was the Chinese and other Portuguese that I see. The Americans of Japanese origins were now disbanded from the Hawaii Territorial Guard. What were they going to do now? In the meantime, my gang at the university, they got together and they said, Hey, you know, ask Japanese kids, can I get no civil uh, defense job now? Civil defense. Only Chinese and other people can get Pearl Harbor, get good job, and, you know, territory. Even at the Puno, I had the engineer, core engineer headquarters, they call, yeah? So we were going to be so bad with ourselves, you know. Anyhow, then I said, hey, let's get together and go sign a petition to the military governor that we like to serve. What is this triple V or uh, VVV? Varsity Victory Volunteers. It's the uh, most university guys, eh? They volunteer. Varsity is over university, right? Varsity Volunteer. Victory Volunteer. Those days, the Victor Garden, you know, all, anything for war effort, right? What happened to the VVV? Came out in the paper. And that's when the Triple V, Vasty Victory Volunteer Organization, that we, I was a labor battalion, eh? we disbanded eh? to all, to, not all, we don't have to, but we, we still going to join, so you know, it was disbanded. The 402 became primary because of VVV too, you know. When the Washington found out that they had a bunch of university kids and they kicked out of the Third civilian guard, eh? and then they volunteer labor battalion, getting back private pay, eh? but private pay is hardly nothing, you know. And then eh, we we part of the army now, we get army meal, everything, eh? so they figure, hey, these kids are uh, they they really want to serve the country. That's when the hundred infantry battalion was formed and four foot two was formed. Those at the time, young men wanted to help their country in any way they could during its time of need. One could describe them as chauvinists. Their work and devotion to their country were soon realized and they were inducted into the military. Not all of the Japanese Americans were placed into combat regiments. Many Nisei were placed into a branch of the service called the Military Intelligence Service, or the MIS. Here they could use their language skills to decipher codes and translate messages for the United States in the Pacific Campaign. On the other side of the world, their brethren were fighting the Germans and taking severe casualties in the process. These brave men fought with their hearts and also with the purpose to prove themselves to the Americans back home. To remove the burden of blame and to fight for their country, their home. A particular battle in Europe still remains legendary. It was called the Battle of the Lost Battalion. It took place near Bifotein, France on October 7, 1944. The 36 Texas Rangers were pinned down and taking heavy casualties. The 100th Battalion and 442nd Regimental Combat Team responded. They fought it out for three days, both units taking over 800 casualties of their own in order to save 200 Texans. With all of their casualties and injured, the battalion was given the nickname the Purple Heart Battalion. A Purple Heart is awarded to a soldier who is injured or killed in the line of combat. Over in the Pacific, the MISs, as they called themselves, did their own frontline work. Some of them ran out into the battlefield and tapped Japanese telephone lines. These men provided critical strategic military plans to the commanders of the United States forces. Later, General MacArthur would say that these men have shortened the war by at least two years. In conclusion, the Nisi and the armed forces were able to prove themselves worthy Americans by enduring the racial isolation of everyday life. Even though they had to endure the callings of Japan nips, they never gave up on trying to prove themselves. After Roosevelt passed a document that allowed the Nisei to volunteer to fight in the war, this allowed them to show the Americans that they were really on the side of the United States. They proved themselves worthy by fighting at their utmost ability and sincere involvement. They won over 9,500 Purple Hearts in the process and were known as the Purple Heart Battalion to some. They were credited at the for the shortening of the war by two years, their unwavering devotion and patriotism made them into the heroes that this country will never forget.